Hi, I'm Rebecca from Ingvid. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to get the highest marks possible in part one of the IELTS speaking test. Now, there are a number of general strategies which you can use on the entire test, but in this lesson, we're going to go step by step through some of the typical questions that you will be asked in this first section. And we'll look at some answers which are not very good, and we'll look at some excellent answers. And we'll also examine these answers from the points of view of how you can improve the grammar, how you can improve the vocabulary and the pronunciation, as well as the overall fluency, because these are the four areas in which you are actually scored, okay? So let's get started. This can make a big difference in your score, so keep watching. Okay, so we'll start with part zero. Now, what is part zero? Part zero is the part where you come in, you sit down, and the examiner is just greeting you and asking your name and asking for your identification. And even though it's strictly speaking, it's not corrected or graded, it's still part of the experience, right? And it's the first part of the experience for you. So you wanna make sure that you're feeling comfortable, that you come across very well, and that first impression is a nice, positive, strong one, okay? So what are some ways to do that? That's what we're gonna look at, all right? Let's get started. So let's say the examiner, you come in, you sit down, the examiner says, good afternoon, and you need to respond. Now, what I've done is I've divided the board into two. On this side is what a weaker student would say. And on this side is what you're gonna say, which is what a stronger student would say. A one, one that's gonna get higher marks. Let's look at the differences. So the examiner says, good afternoon. The weaker student says, nothing, just nods. Maybe smiles, but just nods. Or says, yes. Now the, pro the proper greeting, if someone says good afternoon to you, what should you do? You should say, good afternoon, okay? And that's what you're going to do. So when the person says good afternoon, the examiner, you smile, you repeat the same greeting, good afternoon, all right? Good eye contact, all of that. All right, next. The examiner says, my name is Susan Williams. What's your name? Now, one possibility is if someone said, my name is Maria Flores. But in this part, right, in the entire first part of your IELTS exam, speaking exam, it's really more of a conversation, okay? It's not formal. And in an informal conversation, we don't usually say, my name is Maria Flores, okay? We just say, my name's Maria Flores. So to say my name is, is artificial. It's not exactly fluent. So let's just say, my name's Maria Flores. And what's important there is my name's Make sure that S is actually strong and heard, okay? Because if your S, that contraction, is not heard, it's gonna sound like my name, Maria Flores. And that's not right. That's actually grammatically incorrect, right? So you don't wanna start like that. So you wanna say, my name's Maria Flores. And if you have a complicated last name, one possibility is to say, my name's Maria Flores. Clear, and the examiner also knows, oh, good, I got a student who's gonna speak clearly. What a pleasure, okay? Even though technically your exam hasn't begun yet. But these are all good impressions that will get you far. Next, the examiner asks to see your ID. He or she says, um, could I see some ID, please? Now, you could just say yes, and give it, but it's better, again, to keep showing off your English. What could you say instead? Yes, of course, here you are, okay? You take it out, say, yes, of course, here you are. Keep smiling, keep showing you're confident, you're relaxed, you know what to say, all right? And these little extra words make such a difference because they are judging your English speaking. And everything you can do in those 
11 to 14 minutes to show your, to show off your English, to showcase your English will get you the higher marks you're looking for. Okay. So that was part zero. Now the exam actually begins. Okay. They start recording it also. So when you're speaking, you know, there are lots of tips that I've given actually in another general IELTS uh, lesson about the speaking test, general tips that you can follow, how to sit, how to talk and all of these things, which you should do. But now let's work through the practical parts. Okay. I'll give you links to the other lessons later. Now, so the exam begins and the examiner asks you, where are you from? A weaker student would just say Madrid or from Madrid, but you know better because what should you do? You should give a full sentence whenever possible. Always give full, complete sentences. Give as much information as you can. Give as much content, good vocabulary. Doesn't mean go on for a long, long time, but answer in full sentences so the examiner can grade you that, okay, yes, he or she knows how to speak well and speak correctly and fluently. So instead of saying Madrid or from Madrid, say, I'm from Madrid. Again, be very careful of the contraction. You should use the contraction because it's more natural than saying I am from, but make sure you, you're enunciating it clearly so that it can be heard. I'm from Madrid. Okay, good. Now here's another student. This student said, when asked, where are you from? The student said, from Roma or from Italia. Why is that not good? Because in your IELTS English test, right, they want to hear you using the English names for these cities. So you should say, I'm from Rome, the capital of Italy, for example. Okay. Even if you said one word, which you should not say, it should be Rome and Italy. But don't just say that. Use the opportunity to give a full sentence by saying, I'm from Rome, the capital of Italy. Now you're showing off your good English and you're using the English names for your cities. If you're not sure what they are, find out what they are. Okay. Next. Uh, suppose you're from a place which is uh, maybe people are not as familiar with that name. All right or the, the name of that city. So then you're going to be saying a word which is a little bit unusual for people's ears. So how can you prepare them to hear the name of your city if, it's un, if it has an unusual sound? So here's one way. Suppose this student uh, is from Bordeaux, okay? Now they could say, from Bordeaux, where are you from? From Bordeaux. But what did you say? Very fast, Bordeaux, what, what, what was that? Maybe the examiner didn't catch it. And whenever the examiner doesn't catch or cannot catch what you're saying, that's an indication, not about the examiner, but about you. You needed to speak in a way that was more clear and, and fluent and, and strong. So how can you do that? You can do that by saying something like this. I'm from a city in southwestern France called Bordeaux. Now, what did you do? By explaining first and then using the word called, you are preparing the listener that, oh, I'm going to give the name of something. And then it doesn't actually matter if the person, you know, exactly understood the name or not. But at least they know that that word and that sound that you made was the name of a city. And now it's understandable, which is going to get you much higher marks. Okay. I'm from a city in southwestern France called Bordeaux. All right. Prepare your listener for what you're going to say. Let's go on to some more strong tips. All right. So let's start by looking at some typical questions and answers related to home, family, and work. All right. Let's go. So a weaker answer would be when asked, where do you live? A weaker answer would be, I live in house. What's wrong with that? You tell me. It should be in correct English with correct grammar. I live in a, a house, right? So you need that article here. Whenever we're talking about one thing in English, we need to say a or a. All right. Now, suppose you're asked to describe the house a little bit and you say, 
it's a three bedrooms apartment. So that's a mistake. We cannot say it's three bedrooms apartment. We would need to say it's a, it's a three bedroom apartment. Why? You're saying to me, that doesn't make sense. There are three, it's more than one, it's plural, right? So if you said, my apartment has three bedrooms, okay? Then it's enough to say three bedrooms, period, like end, right? But here, three bedroom became like an adjective for the word apartment. And in that case, you need to drop the S. Now, it's very good for you to actually use this kind of expression if you have a chance, if there's the right kind of question. Don't just put it somewhere if it's not, doesn't make sense. But if, they're, if you're asked about your apartment, you can say, I live in a two bedroom apartment. I live in a three bedroom house. And that little difference with no S and with an S and no S actually shows that you speak a much more advanced level English, okay? These little mistakes, these little corrections can make all the difference. And that's what I'm pointing out to you here. Okay, let's go on. Uh, suppose you're asked to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of living somewhere. So you start to explain. Now, there is a difference in good English between the word the and the, okay? Same word, spelled the same, but sometimes we say the and sometimes we say the. But how do you know? It's very easy. You look at the word that comes after that. If the word that comes after the or the starts with a vowel, then we usually say the, like T-H-E-E, -E, okay? The advantages. The advantages of living in an apartment are or the disadvantages of living in an apartment are, okay? The advantages, the disadvantages, because advantages starts with a vowel. So try to remember that. These little sophisticated changes show that you are more comfortable English, you're more familiar with English, you're more fluent in English, and you deserve higher marks in English. <laughs> okay, all right. Now, uh, you might be asked, uh, you know, do you enjoy living in an apartment? So a weaker answer, and actually in this case, not just weaker, but incorrect, would be to say, I enjoy to live in an apartment because whatever. But what's wrong with saying, I enjoy to live? We can't say in correct English, I enjoy to live. Some verbs in English are followed by an infinitive, like to live, and others are followed by a gerund, like living, the verb with ing. And enjoy is one of those very common words which you're quite likely to need to use in your IELTS exam, which needs to be followed by a gerund and not by this infinitive. So I enjoy living, I enjoy reading, I enjoy watching movies, not I enjoy to watch. That's actually incorrect. Now. How do you know which verbs require a gerund and which verbs don't? Well, you have to listen, you have to read, you have to pay attention, and that's how you learn. There are no hard and fast rules. For example, if you just use the verb, I like, then you could say either way. You could say it, um, I enjoy to live, I en sorry, I like to live, I like living. Either way would be okay with the verb like, but not with enjoy. And enjoy is actually a higher level verb than like. So it's better if you use this one, okay? I enjoy living, remember that. Next, uh, suppose you're asked about family. Tell me about your family. And you start to talk about, you know, I come from a large family or I come from a small family, I live with my brother. But instead of saying brother, you pronounce it brother. So now it's a pronunciation issue. These are some of the points you're, you're graded on, right? Pronunciation, grammar, expressions, and overall fluency. So pronunciation matters. If you say brother, father, mother, that's not good. You should be saying the TH properly like a TH. My brother, my father, my mother, okay? When we say that TH sound, the tongue comes out a little bit between the teeth and goes back. And if you have this kind of mistake, 
then work on that pronunciation, okay? It will sound much more refined. Next, this person said, uh, my brother economist. Okay, lots of grammar mistakes there, right? Many mistakes. It should be, my brother is an economist or my brother's an economist, right? You can contract it also. But you need to have the verb to be, you need to have the article. And if it's economist, you need to say an economist, right? An engineer, an accountant, not a economist, because that would also be incorrect. Because we use an when? Before a word that sounds like a vowel, okay? Not just that starts with a vowel, but that sounds like a vowel. Uh, next, uh, the weak answer would be he work in bank. All right, grammar mistakes again. No, should be he works. All right, uh, third person, present simple. He works in a bank. All right, again, the article, the uh, third person, the S. And make sure, even if you know this, that he works, that it should be he works. Make sure you're pronouncing it in a way that I can hear the S. Now, say it so fast that the examiner can't hear the S, okay? Make sure you do say the S. He works in a bank. He lives here, all right? Get used to that. Uh, next, there are often or almost always questions about your work. What do you do? Now, when they ask, what do you do? What does it mean? It means, what kind of uh, job do you have? What's your occupation, okay? Now, maybe you are not actually working right now. Maybe you're a student. So then you could say that too. But let's look at some possibilities. So a weak answer would be, I am engineer. It's weak from so many points of view. First, because it says, I am. And again, in conversational English, we would probably say, I'm. Second, it's missing the article, an, right? So a correct answer here would be, I'm an engineer. All right, got it? Next here, uh, I am student. Again, same issues should be, I'm a student, okay? Um, or let's say, what happens if you don't have a job? You're not a student and you're not working. You could, first of all, you decide what you share, okay? No one is following you home to see whether you told the truth or not. So you decide what to say, decide in advance what you're going to say for this question, which is almost always asked. So you could say something uh, like, I not working, but that's incorrect in terms of grammar. So it would be, need to be, I'm not working currently, okay? Or I'm between jobs. That's a very nice way to say that you don't have a job right now, but you're going to get a job, okay? So you decide what you wanna say, but whatever you wanna say, make sure that you're saying it in this manner. So let's see how it sounds now if someone were speaking in this way throughout his exam. Where do you live? I live in a house. Um, or where do you live? I live in a three bedroom apartment. The advantages of living in an apartment are that, uh, or the advantages of living in my apartment are that it's very uh, convenient, it's affordable, and it's uh, spacious, okay? Now, because you know in advance that they are going to probably ask you a question about your home, it's good for you to prepare some vocabulary to describe your home or your apartment or your family. Don't learn the whole sentence by heart, right? Just pick some words, three good strong vocabulary words, two or three, and try to weave them into your answer, okay? That will help to uh, raise your score because you're using um, higher level vocabulary as well. Okay, so the person says the, ad the advantages, the disadvantages, okay? I enjoy living in an apartment because of several reasons. Uh, my brother is an economist. He works in a bank. I'm an engineer or I'm not working currently. I'm between jobs, okay? So you see that this, this side, these answers sounded so much more fluent, so much more relaxed, so informal, and of course, correct in terms of grammar, pronunciation, expressions, and fluency, all right? Now let's look at another very common area, hobbies. Okay, now let's look at some simple sentences that you might use on the IELTS when asked about your hobbies. 
For example, I like, sorry, <laughs> I like watching movies. Okay, that's what the student wanted to say. But even with that simple sentence, let's look at some things that might be said, which would actually be completely wrong when you were trying to just say, I like watching movies. The person could say, instead of like, they might not say the word fully and clearly. If you don't enunciate it clearly, it sounds like I lie. I lie watching movies. No, not I lie watching movies. I like watching movies. Instead of I like, a mistake would be to say I likes, right? That's just bad grammar. This one is incorrect pronunciation. Here, sometimes students don't realize that there's a difference between present simple and present continuous. And when you're asked in general, you need to use present simple. So it would be wrong to say, I am liking watching movies because that's present continuous. And also because like is actually something called a stative verb and you cannot use it in this way. You can't use it in a continuous form. So that's wrong. I liking is wrong. So these are some of the ways that this simple sentence might have been completely messed up. Okay. So let's uh, look at the correct one. Next, another example. The student wanted to say, I really like to watch movies or I really like watching movies. Okay. They wanted to be more enthusiastic. So they said, really, this would be the correct form of that sentence. But let me share with you some variations that I've heard when I'm coaching students for this. And these are incorrect. So for example, to say, I like really watching movies. That's wrong because the really is in the wrong place. The grammar is wrong. I very like watching movies is wrong because we can't use very in that way. And I very much like watching movies. This is a popular mistake. I'm sorry. I hear this all the time, but it's incorrect to place very much in that position. If you want to use very much, you need to say, I like watching movies very much. Okay. Why? Because in English, English is a um, SVO language, right? Subject, verb, object. I like watching movies. So we can't put other words like very much, every day, every week, any other details in the middle of it. Okay. Those words have to go at the end. All right. Another possibility. The student wanted to say, I enjoy reading. Simple, right? Simple sentence. How might it be messed up by saying something like I enjoy to read? Again, enjoy is a verb where you need to have the gerund after that and not the infinitive. Do you see how even simple sentences that you might be saying right now when you're practicing might or might not be right? And these are some of the things to watch out for, which is why I put down for you lots of the errors that I have heard students make and which I've helped them to correct. And I'm so happy to be able to help you with that before you go for your exam. Okay, so where do you go from here? This was like a practice test for you through some of the examples, all right? There are other topics they can ask you about and so on. And what you should do is to practice them as much as possible. If you can, get a good teacher to practice with who knows the IELTS, who understands what the needs are for the IELTS exam, not a general English teacher. It's very different when you're preparing for an exam than when you're just improving your English in general, okay? Very different kind of goals. So as much as possible, look for the right teacher. And I'm also going to give you links to a few of my other videos, which are specifically for improving your IELTS score or your TOEFL score or other exam related scores and have a look. And if that addresses some kind of an issue that you have, then by all means, check all of that and correct all of that and empower yourself before you go for your exam. Okay. In addition, please do a quiz on this just to make sure that you've really got it. You can do that at our website, www.ingvid.com. There you'll also find more than 1200 lessons that we have on English in general. And many of them are about the IELTS exam or the TOEFL exam. Okay. Now, uh, the other thing you can do is subscribe. 
I'd love to see you again and share more of my experience with you about how you can really master the English language in general and also for exams like the IELTS. Okay, so all the best with your English. Bye for now and thanks so much for watching.